Today, I will, I will do the present to you the fruit of our research. Kill them all. DDoS protection total annihilation. First of all, I'm, now I'm working in Nessus a company. You can do any research you want. In here, we have uh, many talented people. He is inspiring us. Make sure, uh, let, let me have many creative ideas I can share to you today. I will show you how we try to bypass all the long solution, all the DDoS mitigation solution and service provider. First of all, uh, thank you for letting us discuss first because they sponsor us. So we all organize Let's level that information sharing and analysis center. And we can come to here to share the information. Some information you will be interesting. Some information it is sensitive. First of all, uh, here is our agenda. I will spend around five minutes to give up, to give, uh, uh, the background and the motivation. After that, we're talking about the authentication in here because all the authentication I've been showing here is the most accurate and effective nowadays, if we can bypass it, that means we can hit the server directly. After that, we have the live demo, we show the evidence to your, to your guys to prove that what we've done. Need to be boring, huh? First of all, the attack size now is much more large because the internet coverage now, every guy, they will have the computer, but their security sensors still the same. So the botnet, that means they can have much more. The, we have much more uh, zombie. The result is that attack size become much more large. Another one, the frequency of the attack. Uh, actually, I will say it, the attacker, he only will attack you in your peak hour. I'll give you an example that happened in Hong Kong. One of the uh, store exchange, they are under DDoS attack. The result is that the whole Hong Kong stock market is stopped up that date. Another one, the complicity of the attack, because the bandwidth attack is expensive. So the result is that they try to make the attack much more complex. Give example, I use the ten gig attack to terminate the, uh, some service, but now we just use maybe two megabit per second, that layer seven attack, we already can do it. After that, the result is the cost is, is talking about USD six million per hour. So let me uh, introduce the attack known today. First is a volume metric attack. Just use one sentence. They only focus the attack size. No matter it's TCP, UDP, ICMP, what kind of the medical? They only focus the size. Another one is a semantic attack. Maybe I use another terms, protocol base, application base. They are attacking the weakness of the portal. Give an example, get fat, slow loss attack. They are attacking the HTTP protocol and TCP protocol. Now, they are focused on the application level. Application level, that means maybe uh, they are attacking the database, API. The last, is the bandit attack. Bandit attack actually is the idea use the one DDoS attack to hide another DDoS attack. Give example, there are uh, uh, 30 gig of the same file is attacking you. In the same time, they will send the layer seven attack. But this layer seven attack may be just one megabit per second, but this commerce attack will crash your server because they confuse you. You All your focus is all oh, the graph, is all your level graph is the same file, something like that, but you, Please understand that because they use the application attack to attack you and crash you. Uh, first of all, we have the majors in here to show you. Uh, it, the majors is a summarized characteristic of the volumetric attack and semantic attack. The S S's represent attack complexity. The Y S is uh, represent the attack size. In here, we see some mitigation we can use in here. Always the basic mitigation, but the most important aspect of the mitigation start with detection. So we can add all this one because if we cannot detect the attack, how will we mitigate it? 
And then uh, we have the detection in here. The main thing, uh, we can classify in free time. Ray measurement, base signing. There's a use the ray, uh, there's a use the ray base and flow base. In here, they will show you the packet, pa uh, the level graph. Give example, the packet per second, bit per second, and what kind of the protocol they attack you. Another one is protocol sanity tracking and protocol behavior. Po protocol sanity is the focus on to check in the mail from the protocol. Protocol behavior, this one is focused on the traffic utilization. Application lock, actually maybe it will give you some hints under DDoS attack. So if we combine all together, we will become the big data analysis. So this is our tools, kill them all. Actually, we have, a, we have the free session. I will show you how we attack to bypass all the detection I showed you before. First of all, um, I will focus on the TCP auction and HTTP auction. At last, we were talking about the authentication bypass. <coughs> Something we are doing automatically, give example. We can, uh, we have the traffic pattern sim uh, simulation. Just like the traffic behind the policy, I will explain detail in the later. Another one, we have the HTTP header simulation. So the result is that the attack traffic is seen as the uh, normal traffic. If you drop the attack traffic, that means you drop the uh, at, uh, normal traffic. So how we do it? First of all, we use the policy in here. Uh, the, uh, the program we use, we will use uh, in the same connection, we will use the same user agent. When we send the attack out, just like the traffic be behind the policy. So in this, in this one, when, the, when, I, when, I, when, I, uh, when we send out the attack, you, you try to analyze it. You just see that all the attack just like come from the policy. This one can empower the attack. Another one is HTTP header simulation. In this case, because the HTTP header will be changed during the request. Give you an example. The first request we send to get a web page in the HTTP is access sync slash sync. That means we didn't know what we, need, what we need to take. After that, the server replied to you. So the second request, we will show you just in here. Access image GIF, image JPEG, image something. So in our tools, we automatically to do this one, just like the real traffic. Because the, the given now, always same, the pattern. Our pattern will change as same as the normal traffic. After that, we will focus on the TCP auction and power. First of all, the TCP auction design is against to the detection. And then we try to empower the attack power. At last, we will use a query string. Let me show you. Um, it's one of the example, how we use the TCP auction against the detection. In here, we can fully control every TCP state. This one is an example of a slow loris attack. In here, you will see that after freeware hand shift, we can hold it. After a period of time, we send the first push at. Why we do this one? Because we can, after we hold that connection, that means we can know the limitation, the parameter, the detection they set it. After we send the first push at, the ad is replied, we also will hold it again. Because this one, just how we extend the TCP established status. Because if we try to extend this one, the attack power will be much more strong because, um, uh, how do you say this one? It is because uh, if all the active connection is spend much more resources. Just give you a compare. This is our old fashioned HTTP attack, but same thing add, push add, after the app finish, co finish, co uh, finish add and close the connection. This kind of attempt, you can see it. The result is that your server just high CPU. The and then you will keep the constant of the number of the connection. But your, your server is no impact. Just high CPU is still can come here and the HTTP 200 reply. Nothing. So how we do it? If we wish to attack, we need to do it like that. First of all, we feel hand ship, push at the first request. After that, don't close the connection. We keep send the push at. I mean the HTTP request. The result is that this time, the server with high memory, 
they were high C, not just the high CPU, because the one they crash your server is high memory for we will not have his CPU. Another thing is that because we try to keep the correction, so the correction will keep increasing. The result is that maybe after five seconds, ten seconds, your server is HTTP 503 service unavailable. This one is never common. Another one we will do with force no cache. How we do it? Just easy. We just use the query string, a question mark. After the question mark, have a random call because for the point of the view of your server or the load balance of the policy, every this kind of the query string, they will think that it's a new request. So they will not cache you and then let you bypass. The result is that, that just the example I'll show you, I try to download a large PDF and then use the query string. The result is that your bandwidth will use the up. After that, we will go through the source host verification one by one. All the application in here actually is the last, also is the death, death line that we can try to mitigate the attack. First, we, uh, I'll show you the TCP sync authentication, the TCP reset. That one, they uh, authenticate based on the favorite handshake, the TCP layout. First, we send the sync. He will not let you pass. They inter intercept you. After that, we will have the sync at Add, he will reset to you. This one is the mitigation device. We try to uh, active close you. Reset is different to finish. Uh, reset, that means I think that the correlation have problem. I will terminate it. After that, when we retry the sync, we will, buy, we will pass it. So that's, that is the TCP sync. Another one I want to show is TCP out of sync. This one, they will need to be tricky. When I send a sync, here we put the sync at. The sequence number is wrong. What will happen if the sequence number is wrong? This time, the client will reset the connection. After that, if he see, your, see you, the source IP is the same, you come again, he will think that, oh, you're the real IP, and then he will let you pass. So what is the difference between the TCP reset and TCP out of sync? Actually, when we handle the DDoS attack or the sync fuck, what really happened when we send the sync, sync at, and then we will send the reset because we use the spoof IP. What's it mean by the spoof IP? Be that means you will not add, you only send one sync in this case. So the result is the same, but why they decide like, like that? Because the efficiency handle a real user is totally different. Give you, give you an example, the TCP reset, if you add all the, um, all the packet together, oh, just mention, total length is dif uh, different to the packet uh, length, uh, packet size, because uh, the header length always alternative, so we will not count in here. You will see that the TCP reset is one, one, 180 byte, and TCP all thing, we just use the bandwidth around 140. So in here we will find, that, oh, the TCP all thing seems is better. Is it really better? I will show you another one. Actually, we can bypass easily use the spoof IP. I, I means we, I use the spoof IP can bypass the TCP sync authentication. In this case, we try to use the same source IP send the sync. When he, no matter he reply the sync or not, we just send the reset again. And then we send the sync again. Use this kind of the methodology. 33% of the attack can bypass it. I mean the spoof sync file can bypass the TCP sync authentication. But actually, the traditional sync file, they are 40 byte. They're missing something. Maybe it, it are not hard to find some news to show you. Ah, I can mitigate 100 gig attack. I can mitigate 200 gig attack, something like that. Because they haven't shown you this, some, some, something, some secret. Because if the TCP sync is 40 byte, we can drop it by the ISP directly. Actually, TCP will not 40 byte because uh, according to the RFC decide, the TCP sync he will left the IP uh, the TCP option because the first thing he will try to um know, let you know what I uh, uh what uh, give you example the maximum segment size. He will tell you how many segment I can use it. So when we try to simulate as real sync traffic again, I will suggest 
in the IP layer, please randomize the TTL because the attack now always 255. It's boring. You just see the strict line. Oh, this is attack. I dropped by the TTL. Another one, please randomize your window, window size. Window size just will tell you what is your OS. Give you example, maybe window to, uh, 6, uh, 5, 5, 3, 5, something like that. This one it also need to, um, to um, spoof. Give you example, maybe I spoof the window XP, window MT, or uh, window, uh, window 7, something like that. And then we need to add the correct option. Because if we add this one, the ISP cannot drop you easily this time. So another authentication I wish, I wish to show is HTTP redirect authentication. In this one, we will focus on the layer seven. When the first get we send, it will redirect a path. If your client can redirect back, he will, and then he will uh, redirect you back the first path you wanted to go. The result is that you can pass it. So what is the key to bypass HTTP redirect? First of all, we need to find out the, uh, detect the HTTP v02. Because when you capture this one, that means they have the HTTP redirect. You need to do something. The second thing is you need to, um, in the same time, you need to make sure they have a location, httpa.c.com. So if this, uh, if we find the v02 and location, that means they have HTTP redirect. In this time, you just load the script until the, uh, come back HTTP 200. That means bypass them. So easy. Because just a simple program like WGAS, CURL also can do it. So the, we enhance it. We should HTTP cookies in this time. This times, not just be direct. We add the cookies. If the client, he can, he can add the cookie and reply it back. He will redirect you. He will redirect you uh, back to the, the page you want to go. The result is that this time you can pass it and why this you. So what is the key to bypass the cookies? First of all, uh, we, need to, we need to detect set cookies, the keyword is. If they have the set cookies, that means they have an offense call. You just copy, uh, you need to uh, copy it. And another thing you need to make sure is the expire. Because the expire, it is the sense to tell you how to set the authentication. Because now the authentication, he will um, use time-based or traffic based Give an example. Maybe you authenticate it. After five minutes, you need to authenticate again. So this time, we told you the threshold you need to set. So, but sometimes, if you in the third HTTP redirect request, you saw this one, often call deleted. That means bad luck. Why? Because that means Every time you change the cookies. So you need to do the obligation every time. We also have the enhanced one. The HTTP cookies use the header token. In this case, you will see that he will use a cook, uh, use a HTTP header. It's not common. This time they use HTTP holder. Maybe, uh, in our case, we use H, X hyphen header colon something. Other things, it seem as the cookies of authentication. So, but this one have the problem, the, po uh, the policy dependency behavior. Why we have this problem? Because um, if you wanted to develop the uh, header token, that means you need to use the API, AJS, and XHR tool. But the problem is that this kind of the technique till now is not comparable to all of the browser. The result is, you can, the render cannot fully use all the function. So we just simulate the traffic flow, we can bypass it. And then we have the JavaScript of it. Actually, this one is most challenge now. Again, we send a get, he will, he will give you a hint, he will give you a JavaScript, and then he will ask you to calculate something this time. If you can calculate and post the result, he will redirect you back, to the index page. So he will whitelist you and you can pass it. The key to bypass the JavaScript is that, first of all, JavaScript is client side program. What does it mean by client side program? That means you just open your Wireshark, HTTP watch, you can find the path and download it. JavaScript is human can understand. That means you can read it and analyze it. After that, 
we can use a uh, different uh, algorithm to bypass it. First of all, after that, uh, we can calculate the result just simply the traffic flow and bypass it. All the guys doing this one now. Another one is that we use the client deploy deployment mode and server deployment mode to cover the method. Actually, we use the auto bypass. I will show you because our program is just one megabyte. What is the client deployment mode? In this case, we will, we will add the JavaScript engine inside the bot, but this will have the limitation because we just can run something. It's purely JavaScript only. It's no WVC, DOM, I mean, maybe some parameter inside HTML and then you need to call it back in the JavaScript. Cannot. Another case, we, we use the application bundle, in this case, the server in here. So when every time, the CMC server, uh, they ask the botnet to attack. The botnet will communicate to this server. He will send back, he will zip the file and send back to the, the server. And then he will uh, show, uh, he will calculation by the serv this server. After that, he will give back to the client and then to bypass it. Okay, the CAPTCHA, actually this one, I would say, is the most effective and accurate, but the problem is that is the user experience never poor because sometimes all people also cannot understand the capture. Again, just seem as seem as the JavaScript authentication. This one he will use the um after you fill in something and post it, and then we redirect redirect back, and then you can pass it. So, what is the key to bypass the capture? Ah, oh, I have something wrong. But never mind. First of all, we need to find out the uh, find the path of the BMP. I mean the orphan page, just the, the capture page. Because if you can download it, that means you can use some algorithm to bypass it. After that, the challenge is that embedded the capture engine in the broadnet. Uh, we will uh, we use the uh, the same method as the JavaScript, just uh, simulate the traffic flow, use the client deploy model or use server deploy model. But actually, if you come to DEF CON, you'll find that we have many capture engines. We can download it and then can use it and add in our program. So this is the summary of the source host of our verification. First of all, we use, they will verify you are long put soft IP or not. After that, the HTTP redirect and cookies, they will verify is it HTTP compatible appliance or not. Now, JavaScript, they will verify you are the real Browser or not, the capture, he will try to verify your real human or not. After we bypass over all of them, we can attack directly. Um, so, um, Tony bring out a very important point that uh, in today's uh, detection and mitigation techniques, um, we have to rely on the source host verification. And once we can um, once we can bypass these verification, we can um, get to the uh, back end directly, and the attack are all to the back end. So our proof of concept two is trying to bypass this authentication. First, um, we try three times. Uh, because the first time expected TCP sync authentication, it will fail because it will reset you or uh, it will send a wrong sequence number to let you reset. So the second authentication, we suppose it will success. And the third authentic authentication, um, we are just uh, for sure, make sure it is, um, it is uh, correctly uh, put our, uh, our IP into the whitelist, for example. And also, um, to make it, uh, to make the attack or the authentication more like um, a real user, we will have a true TCP/IP behavior handled by the operating system uh, TCP/IP stack directly. And also um, from the POC2, um, especially the cookie authentication, the HTTP cookie will be carry on the following uh, uh, attacks, attack uh, packets. 
because uh, even you are putting into the whitelist, if you don't have the cookie in the subsequent attack, um, you, you might be uh, blocked. And also the JavaScript, we are implemented using a um, using, using something like um, um, a Spider Monkey or, or um, V8 uh, uh, JavaScript engine. Um, currently, um, we don't have a Doom implemented in that or, uh, included, um, but um, this is just a matter of time. And finally, um, about the capture. Um, as you can see, or in the coming video, uh, you will see um, how this uh, how this screen comes from. Um, the design is that uh, to make the make our attack tool uh, sending a correct um, capture to uh, back to the mitigation device. Um, the design is that we first convert the um, color image to to a black and white and maximize the contrast and then apply the uh, median filter to filter out the noise and then segment the word uh, into individual characters and find out the boundary, uh, boundary of each of the character. Um, finally, we, are, uh, we simply cal uh, calculate the pixel difference. Um, you might think that this is um, very, very um, uh, rough implementation, but it can successfully um, it can successfully break the uh, capture by more than 50%. In fact, if you want a higher rate of uh, capture authentication, you need a capture library. Uh, I think DevCon has um, presented a lot of, on this, in, no matter in this year and the past years. About, um, after authent authenticate, after bypassing all the authentication, um, now comes to the attack. Uh, in the attack, we have the TCP options and also the HTTP options. What TCP options talking about is control the timing of the TCP connections. Um, we can control the number of connections established to the, to the backend server. Why backend server? Just because we bypass it. And we can hold the connection for a certain of time. Um, this, uh, as, you, as Tony mentioned, uh, this benefits for the slowest attack. And also we can, we can handle the connection idle time out before, um, uh, after the last uh, HTTP request. And we can control the connection interval so that to avoid um, something uh, uh, hitting the threshold of the mitigation device. For the HTTP options, um, it actually is that uh, within the TCP connection, there is, um, there is a period to sending multiple requests. This request, uh, each, re uh, each HTTP request is an HTTP connection. We can control the number of connections and also the intervals of each connections. And now we are, um, now we are showing the video. Um, let us see how it runs in uh, real examples. First of all, we look at HTTP redirect. Um, that means uh, you can see in the left part of, uh, of the user interface, the first checkbox. Um, from, uh, from our testing, the left side is the client side. As you can see, the client launched um, our QDemo tool. And the right side is uh, the server side. As you can see, the web server log. Um, on both sides, we have a packet capture. Um, uh, Wireshark is um, capturing the um, packets. When we start launching the attack, and you can see um, this is the authentication, um, this is the authentication part. Um, you can see because the first time it, um, this one returned a free, um, return a three two, um, so it redirect, um, it it is a redirect authentication. 
So, um, and you see subsequent 200 OK for three times because, as I said, um, we're doing the authentication for three times for sure. Now, let's see what next. After authentication, um, you can see from the parameters, um, we hold a few seconds and then send four requests. This is the first one. You can see from the query string, uh, started with E, and then that second one started with N, etc. And the four requests are all going to the back end. As you can see, both from the server side, Wireshark, and both the server web server log. Next, we are going to the HTTP cookie authentication. Um, for the same uh, for the same setting, the testing environment, um, it. You can also see the redirection uh, because it uh, requires you to um, send back the cookie. And also, you can see four different requests um, going to the back end. Yes, uh, in the testing environment, use, we use four. But in the bot environment, I don't think you in your server you will receive four too little because um, you will have so many uh, bots. Uh, let us uh, pick a attack and one of the attack uh, HTTP requests. You can see, as I said before, the authentication cookie is carried to the attack. There is a cookie view in this attack packet. Now, goes to the JavaScript authentication. Um, this one, um, we are, this one we are using, um, uh, we are using a, a CDN to test. Um, as you can see, the JavaScript is quite, um, sophisticated. Uh, you, it hold your uh, authentication for some time. And then, um, it also has, uh, a cookie embedded in it. And from the right side, you can see the server side. Um, you can see the four attacks. You can see the four attacks are all um, goes to the back end server um, after we bypass our JavaScript. Um, let us take a look at this one. And as you can see, even if this is JavaScript, it also has a cookie, um, cookie field there. And, and the cookie uh, clearance uh, means that we are successfully bypassing the JavaScript. And lastly, we are showing about the capture authentication. Um, this one um, with the same, and you can see from the authentication phase, uh, you, uh, the mitigation device has um, the capture image, the bitmap sent back, and then uh, we have the four subsequent uh, attack goes to the back end. And we are we are interested in whether it is really um, bypassing a correct uh, capture image. So we pick up a packet about the um, about the after we recognize the bitmap and send it out, and you can see this is the WMGK which match the original bitmap. So this is our tool. Kill them all, integrating both the authentication and the attack phase. As you can see from the video, um, our tool, uh, our tools, simulate the true TCP/IP behavior uh, through the OS uh, TCP/IP stack, and we have a believable HTTP header so that no matter it is a mitigation device or a cloud CDN environment, um, it, it believes our HTTP headers are true. 
and also we have an embedded JavaScript engine so that it will not um, it, uh, so that it is uh, it is not bulky, um, it is lightweighted, and also we have our own capture solving capability, and to maximize the successful rate, we randomize the uh, payload including. Uh, HTTP headers such as user agents and also uh, tunable uh, post authentication uh, timing and traffic models. In conclusion, this is these all these all these settings making it indistinguishable from human. How indistinguishable it is? You can see um, we can from the from the from our testing, the date of our testing, you can see from the slide. Um, we said uh, we try for this is the CDN. We try for eleven times. Each time we have four requests. So you can see forty-four requests. And from what the uh, CDN portal, we can see that uh, all are regular traffic. No bots, no threats. Forty-four is a small number. In real life, you will receive 44 million. So, it comes testing environment um, for the device. Um, that means for the four for authentication, some are doing on the device, some are doing on the CDN. Um, this is the setting that um, against the device and against the cloud, we put the server behind the mitigation device and the client side. Uh, on the other side of the internet. Um, this is the result and uh, summary. And I'm not uh, intended to talk about here, but uh, you can see uh, we do a lot of testing to make sure it is uh, all bypassed and the attacks are successful. Um, these are all as well. Um, these are the two uh, secure CDNs. So it comes to the end of our presentation, and you can check out our new version of tools here. Thank you.